Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I am Ashtin Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we're going to be talking about the habit of reading. Now there are so many people who write in saying that Ashtin, I just have no idea how to read. Right, reading was something that was forced to me in school, but now I just don't feel like doing it. Why is everyone telling me to read books? So we have the famous silly reader with us, Arjun Sachdev, and we're going to understand what are his habits of going through so many books in a year, understanding it, choosing them. and how he got started into all of this so arjun welcome to the habit coach podcast uh, thank you arjun thank you so much for having me here uh, let's see how how this goes i am very excited to have this conversation with you because arjun yeah. first let's start by telling the listeners a little bit about yourself how did you get on to this journey uh, yeah so uh, let's go back 1 2 3 4 4 let's go 4 or 5 years back i was uh, i was uh, in my engineering second year and i had i lived with people who were one year senior to me and the thing was when when and the thing is that i used to live in a 2 bhk flat with six people five five were my senior and the last one was me so when they used to talk within themselves they used to talk about intellectual things like they they would talk about world geography geopolitical things and how those things affect india or some other country and uh, and it used to fascinate me a lot so uh, when i used to go with uh, go and walk with them or we used to go for dinner out and then i used to ask them that how do you acquire this knowledge and the type of things you talk about really fascinate me so how can i become like you and they used to mention that this happens because we read a lot we read certain kind of non fictional books and they help us get aware of the things that is happening around the world and uh, like it fascinated me and that inspired me to start reading books i started reading books but it didn't became a habit uh, i used to book i used to read one book two books per month but it wasn't a consistent habit let's come to fourth year of my engineering my seniors passed out of college because i am right now in the fourth year of engineering and they have passed out uh, now as uh, a lot of people know that when the fourth year starts a lot of companies come and uh, starts to hire you for their role certain roles companies came the first company came i i gave the interview i didn't get selected the the interview i reached to the final round and the guy told me the interviewer told me that your communication skills are not good enough and the the thing is that at that point of time i should have considered his feedback and should have worked upon it but i ignored it okay mm-hmm. next company came and it was my dream company the one that i wanted to get placed in now i totally fucked up the interview like i couldn't imagine that i will fuck that interview in my dreams and like when the interview results came and obviously i didn't get selected my moral was down completely shattered very disappointed depressed i was in my room for 2 3 days not going out not talking to anyone and now now, and now the thing is that uh, my roommate i have shifted to a new place then and now my now my roommates were 2 years younger to me and that thing happened that uh, my roommate had a book in his room in his wardrobe and that book was attitude attitude is everything change your attitude and change your life and that title uh, took took me by surprise i i was shocked and surprised okay so let's see what's in that book i read that book and now my attitude towards life changed completely after that book so after that book the thing is that how i saw life absolutely changed and from that point my consistent reading habit started and from that from that time i i think that almost every day i have read at least 10 minutes or more yeah that Of is how the at, reading at all yeah interesting so what was that shift that happened after you read that book what was that change that took place in 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 your mind with your attitude 
okay the thing is that in in that particular book the author also faced a lot of obstacles in his life and and he used to read a lot of books like think and grow rich and the power of subconscious mind and many books of uh, jim ron who used to be a who used to be a like a very legendary motivational speaker when he was Ill- when he was alive correct so, he was tony tony robbins's guru yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah right 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 and and the author of attitude is everything jeff keller he mean, he mentioned a lot about jim ron and napoleon hill so i thought let's start reading books and see how how the the books he read altered his attitude so and he mentioned that after reading those books he had uh, he had changed he had changes in his attitude and that is how his life changed so i thought why not try it and actually after that book uh, when when my attitude changed my mindset changed things happened in in the way i expected it to be so few few days after i re- reading that book a company came to my campus and i got placed in that company and like the experience of it was like was something i didn't expected hmm. that's amazing right the way that you know that book changed the way that you were thinking about your future and and the way that your attitude towards the interview changed i think that's the power of books right over the course of time Absolutely. you in fact in your profile you say i am a non fictional reader only it's almost like no i primarily read non fiction books okay so so there is a there is a like perspective to it because i mention it because i read fiction books also but the thing is that when i re- when i write that i am a non fictional reader the the authors who will approach me will be non fictional authors only like mm. you did okay mm. so and and it uh, and it caters to my audience also because majority of my audience lived lives in the united states or in europe and they are mostly interested in non fiction non fictional genre and i don't want to show something in into them that that they are not interested in correct so i complete i used to do fictional reviews back then back like 2 2 years before but i stopped it because it didn't cater to my target audience see ultimately the thing is that i want to give value to people who follow me and if if something is not be is not valuable to them why do it in the first place right so how did you start off on this journey of sharing all the stuff that you're reading why how and where did it uh, begin because one is reading and most of the time reading is very very personal that we do so how come you started sharing it yeah so once again an inter- interesting story uh, in march 2020 the first lockdown happened i was in my company working and uh, back then as the lockdown started i i had almost nothing to do so and i had developed the reading habit back then so uh, i was in my room i was not staying at home i was in gurgaon in a hotel where my company allocated me to stay okay uh, so i i was reading every day in the lockdown and i thought why not share these things with people who are connected to me on instagram and show them that how books have changed my life so it was coming like it was coming inward to outward so i wanted to showcase the changes that i have got through books to the people who are who are connected to me on instagram those are my friends and families okay nothing more than that and i gave a 21 day challenge to to myself the first lockdown was for 21 days and i gave a challenge to myself that i'll post a, an igtv video Uh, of something that i learned from a book one one video per day for 21 Lovely. days okay so i did it for 21 days i started liking it i did again for 21 days for the second lockdown also and that is and i used to use hashtags on that post so like let's suppose i i am i am telling something about a particular lesson in a particular book and i use that hashtag of that book so people who follow that hashtag started seeing my videos and that is how a lot of people discovered me and then they uh, got connected to me started following me and then some some people told me that okay uh, what you are doing is nice they, it is helping me a lot and that is how it all started and th- when 
when few months passed i uh, i discovered this community called bookstagram community where people on instagram talk about books only it would be book reviews book recommendations or certain things about books it would be all about books so bookstagram community uh, i discovered the bookstagram on instagram community. itself yes hmm. because i was posting igtv videos on instagram right one Correct. video per day and then and then i was like i was using hashtag related to books so people who were on bookstagram discovered me and i discovered a community called bookstagram okay then few few months later reels came out the reels feature got out and i started posting reels and few months passed and out of the blue few of my reels got viral hmm. it got 500 500k views 600k views and a lot of people started following me and that is how all these things happened and then slowly and gradually people started following me and now we are talking yeah that's actually i'm i'm guessing how i started following you as well i think i saw one of your reels and then i started following you on, yeah, yeah. on instagram yeah. the the thing is that once reel reels got out uh, instagram algorithm started pushing people who were making reels and that is how a lot of my audience discovered me hmm. so so i'm also going to add add here that your habit of making your reels and all of that has helped you with all this so you know it's so interesting how the consistency with the reading of the books is important and the consistency with the putting out the content also is important with, with what you've done how do you yeah. form these these habits like for example tell me what is your reading habit currently like do you have a set yeah. time that you sit down what do you do how do you read i make sure that i read at least for 30 minutes to 1 hour daily it could be anything it could be audio books it could be on my kindle it could be physical book but i make sure that something gets to my head because Uh, like i'll get to quote and quote what my mentor used to say he used to say that reading is not important learning is because if you don't learn you will stop growing and eventually you, your your life will get stagnant and there will be no growth there will n- n- nothing that that is that like uh, what can i say that that excites you yeah so so he used to say that make sure that you learn something new every day and i i make sure that at least for 30 minutes i read no matter what is happening in my life so there is not a fixed time but usually nowadays it happens in the morning that when i have my breakfast after that i i sit and i read for 30 minutes to 1 hour what am i what what whatever i am suitable with so when you wake up and you do this like are there days when you don't feel like reading are there days when you you're like i don't feel like doing this today it's okay if i miss it today do you have moments like that also no it it doesn't happen and there is a reason to it because i don't take it as a chore or something that i have to work upon it it gives me pleasure so like it it is like eating a pastry for you it gives you pleasure and like you cannot resist doing that thing right so when when i see that my my, my bed is there and this Correct. is my bookshelf up there you can't see but when i wake up i i can see my bookshelf here so mm. the visual cues are very strong and for habits to form the environment should support you right Correct. when you read atomic habits it, it would mention that the kind of environment you live in influences a lot in the type of habits you have so i am i am there i wake up there and my bookshelf is right up here i am sitting with my laptop here this is my this is my laptop desk here where my laptop is kept right now and that is my shelf so every time the visual cue is very strong and like even if i am not very conscious of it i'll 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 still see that there are books so it now has get into my head that i have to read and now it is not like a chore to me it it gives me pleasure and that's why i can do it consistently for a longer period of time so so i know that you've read atomic habits you've not read my book yet but you've read atomic habits out of that what all have you culled out and actually used in your life from a habits point of view a lot of things like it it now gets in your head that you can't remember that you read it in in that book but uh, i can i can say it is one of the most applied books that i have done in my life like hmm. uh, the 1% rule that you have to increase something by 1% every day and it will start compounding 
and uh, uh, my the the environment thing i have mentioned in my youtube videos also that i have set up my environment in a manner that it supports my habit like i used to do something and there is a whiteboard there you can hmm. see right correct there is a white i i i sleep there and when i wake up i can see my whiteboard there so i have like uh, i have uh, designed my environment in a manner that i need to do things that help me get productive i bought this rough pad few days back and i keep it there so that i can remember what i have whatever i have to do so, so you write down on things. it so you constantly using yeah. these as visual yeah. cues throughout yeah. your yeah absolutely and these are nudges that keep me on the line and it aligns me with the things that i want to do in my day and in the foreseeable future amazing because it's so important to start utilizing the things that you've read right like you can read a book and if you forget half of it or if you forget 60% or if you don't actually make a change from it then it was quite useless so so actually the, changing the, 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 the thing is that you will tend you will tend to forget it because our brains are designed that way it hmm. will it will always uh, skip information or forget information that you don't find useful so i i also have developed a habit and i reread a lot of books okay the book that have created a valuable impact in my life so atomic habits is a book that i've read two three times hmm. so what are the other books that you would have read multiple times yeah so I, one is uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck one is my favorite mm. book and your favorite also the go giver i have read it multiple times correct and uh, okay uh, i have read uh, the courage to be disliked two three times i have read the alchemist a lot of times uh, i have read tuesdays with mori two times and mm. i have read the four agreements have you read the four agreements i think i have read the four agreements What okay, is the I have read. I've forgotten the the premise. Okay, okay, it is don't take things personally. Be impeccable with your words. Don't assume things, and always give your best. Like uh, it it mentions that rather than assuming something, best is to clarify it. And like if you start overthink, if you start assuming things, it will get you into into an overthinking mode, and you will and your brain will constantly be consumed in that activity like what he what he'll think about me or what he is thinking about me or how will this thing happen it, it's better to clarify and like don't don't take thing personally say, let's say uh, i i say that as then you are an idiot and i am saying that you are an idiot but if you took it personally you are actually meaning that you are an idiot and you have accepted people, it yeah you have accepted it correct and 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 there are chances that i might have not meant it in a literal manner but you take it personally so now it will start affecting you so these mm. are things so yeah the four agreement four agreement i have read yeah the four agreement is something i have read multiple times and there are things in my wardrobe i can't remember the name of the books but these are some of the books that i have read multiple this times. four agreements i don't think i have read i'm going to pick it up i think so yeah yeah, yeah. You, you you surely should have if you mm. think you have these problems or you want to like suggest it to people also mm. you should give it a shot no no because for me reading is all about understanding and consuming information right because yeah, the kind of work that i do it is creative in nature so you're constantly looking for different different ideas to connect with each other yeah. so absolutely. like i was telling you this last year right last year i finished some 100 and something books it was only from this point of view of seeing how much content can i create in my mind connect and then what i'm doing this year is rereading the stuff that i found valuable yeah. and then taking it forward right so t- tell me something you know when you are reading some uh, a book what is your what are your fingers doing are you writing on the side are you underlining are you making doggy ears are you doing something to the book yeah so these are things that are very constant this is a highlighter and this so is a one highlighter and, and a pen and pen is one thing that i see wait this is a book that i am mm. reading currently and i want to show something to you just give me a moment and you'll if obviously you see, see this on our youtube channel right yeah if you could see here i have written things down i am not sure if if you are able to see wait I'll, i can't i can't see what you've written but i've noticed that you've written something next to the title next to the section heading okay uh, give me a moment also i'll showcase something uh, 
okay these are few takeaways from that book from this mm-hmm. book from this particular chapter that i have read so and you can see that these are all the highlighted things so when i read a physical book mm-hmm. when i read a physical book these are the two things that are always in my hand and when i'm reading a kindle or in the kindle app so it has a highlight feature and a notes feature so there is nothing you so, actually use the notes feature in the kindle yeah yeah i can huh. showcase it to you with just to i use the highlight all the time but i never use the notes in 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 kindle okay uh, give me a second this is my kindle app i'll show hmm. it i'll show it to you is that on your phone yeah it's on my phone right now hmm. these are okay so it doesn't showcase showcase the note right now but it has a lot of notes correct because because when i'm revisiting the book i need to be aware of what i was thinking in that particular moment because our memories are like very fucked up very distorted things hmm. it won't remember actually what you were feeling when you were reading that book at that particular moment so i write it down and see if my point of view when i'm revisiting the book has changed or not because that's so interesting because, right i like your habit of writing in the section itself you know in this chapter these are the key points that i took away i think that for me was a, a big learning of how you're writing your, your yeah, notes see 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 when you read a book multiple times it happens because i have read the subtle lot of not giving a fuck more than five times and every time i revisit the book i check for what i what i had written when i read it previously so okay now i can figure out that what was i thinking at that moment and has my perspective or point of view changed in that moment hmm. and so it 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 actually gives me a a type of progress card that if if i have progressed from that point of view or not or is it that timeless principle that has held at that time and it is like it is happening in the present also that's like so interesting so what are, was happening at that yeah. point of time has changed yeah hmm. yeah the, the the thing is that certain things are timeless let's suppose i am reading a book on stoicism and stoicism centers around the a principle that you need to figure out what is in your control and what is not in your control so let's suppose i am thinking about what ajin is thinking about me is it under my control no it is not can i control it i cannot control it so why the hell should i worry about what you are thinking about me when i know that it is not under my control and it is timeless because it won't change i cannot influence what you think about me or what you say about me absolutely and the stoic principles are amazing you know i think there are so absolutely. many different varieties of stoic books that you can look at there are obviously compendiums like you know like your daily stoic and all of that but even yeah. listening to you know like um apna what is the the letters no what is it meditations meditations is a yeah, fantastic book okay. right marcus aurelius yeah. so just understanding the different styles of stoic thinking itself is so interesting in the way that you can start making a change in your life absolutely so now you're reading this two three things one is do you speed read no i don't i don't so you read each and every word of a book yeah yeah, yeah. yeah see i have no competition i have no sense of urgency to finish these particular books in this particular time as i mentioned that i am doing it for my pleasure for my for my learning i am not trying to showcase it to you and when we had a chat when we had a chat previously you asked me what is the number of books that you have read in the past year and i i told you that i i haven't kept a, a count of how many books i have read because Uh, why the fuck should i care about it because i am doing it for my learning if i skip a book if i drop the book and if i don't read it completely the thing is that whatever i wanted to gain from that book i have gained and it is no more a vanity metric for me that i am i need to finish 100 books or 150 books this year so i don't speed read it i read it for my pleasure and i take as much time as i want to you know arjun this is such an important point that you raised that it is perfectly okay to stop a book if it's not making sense to you if you're not getting the thing out of that book instead move on to something else okay uh, so should i share a perspective about this my yeah, yeah. mentor is amrut yeah so my mentor amrut deshmukh uh, shared a video on uh, instagram and he mentioned that 
when you go to watch a movie or when you watch a movie on your television and for the first 20 minutes you are not liking the movie would you watch the complete movie hmm. no no obviously no right why why okay. should you waste your time that is the same thing that should happen with books it is the author's job to keep you hooked in that book and if it okay. is not interesting you right now skip it drop it you can come back to it later because you own the book but yeah. it it's not necessary to complete the book drag yourself and like you have to read that book because you bought it no it is not because your time is more important than money and if you invest your valuable time in that book you are not utilizing it in something that you could have done because time is a resource right correct and Absolutely. that is a perspective that a lot of people need to have yeah especially because i know so many people whose first books are something hardcore you know like zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance or war and peace by leo tolstoy it's like that's your first book that you're reading wow yeah. so you yeah. know as a result you realize that like if if you realize that this is not up your alley this is not your cup of tea drop the book start something else start something simple and then at least get into the practice of finishing or at least going through the book once you enjoy something that you're reading absolutely yeah, tell me something you know like we start off reading a book at how much point of time will you give it give the book till you realize ki you know this is not for me ye mere liye nahi hai i should like probably now move something move to something because you have a full bookshelf full of books that are unread right yeah no see uh, let's say i own 100 books let's say mm. i have read 80% of them uh, 70 mm. to 80% of them and I, I, i haven't read 20 to 30% of those books but as i have a lot of collection uh, the the count number is very high if the 20 30% still looks like a very big number correct let's because of the I, number i have let's like, suppose i have a 1000 book collection hypothetically i have a 1000 book collection Hmm. and i even if i have read 70% that means 700 books the rest 30% still looks like 300 books Correct. and the number is very high so hmm. so that, that that is the fault when you think in a probabilistic manner when you count on percentages yeah and when you have to read a book fast i was uh, last week i had to interview jay shetty so his new book has come out eight rules of love eight rules eight of rules, love right yeah. So um, I had the opportunity of interviewing him. So I said, if I have to interview him about the book, I better read the book. So suddenly I had to yeah. quickly buy the book, and within a day and a half, I had to finish reading that entire book cover to cover, so that I could actually have that conversation with him. So I think you know that sometimes that speed reading habit comes in handy when you have to do something fast like this. But otherwise, <laughs> the, 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 the thing the, the, the thing is the thing is that now it is it is a part of your job to do it because correct. and and that is a very like very per, very perspective very perceptive thing that you do it was very thoughtful of you to first read that book be- before going to interview him right so it was very per- perceptive of you but as i don't have to interview anybody it doesn't matter for me right correct but then it makes sense because then you're actually I, i love what you said you're enjoying it you're doing it for yourself and then you're sharing it is not that yeah. pressure of i have to share i have to do this so the speed reading need is not necessary you don't have to get into that category okay so arjun i want to understand now how do you choose books that you're going to be reading so you know when people come and say okay i want to start reading a book let's say this is the first book that they ever going to read what would you say suggest they start off with mm, uh, can you come again i didn't understand your uh, question properly okay so i was saying that So how do you choose books that you want to start reading? Do you start reading books um uh, how do you decide what is a good book to start? I'll give you a few examples. Um say there is somebody who comes to you and says Arjun I've never read a book before in my life. What is a good book okay. for me to start off with? Okay, so you are asking me to suggest a book to them or Correct. for my personal read? No, for you suggesting a book to them and then okay. teaching them how to choose books. I don't actually uh, try to tell them on how to choose books I I let them be because everybody has a different interest in something like maybe someone has a interest in fantasy and maybe in erotica maybe in a thriller or in a suspense 
crime thriller okay so i don't actually tell them on how to choose books but when they come to me uh, the first question that i ask them is what what is something that interests you because mm-hmm. as you mentioned earlier in our conversation that a lot of people choose very hard books at the very beginning of their reading career or reading journey and that yeah. is how they they fuck up it they fuck it up right because they drop it they can't read it and they think that reading is not for me so i first ask them that what interests you or what is something that you would want to improve on there would be two things like if you are something if there is something you are curious about or that, there is something that interests you or you need to work upon something or improve let's say someone asked me for a self help book recommendation i asked them that is there something that you want to improve on and some somebody mentioned that they imp- they want to improve their productivity or their time management i can now suggest them eat that frog and it is a very easy go to read book right it is very easy and the second book can be do it today by darius forus so these are very short reads and as the, the the beginner reader who are coming to me for suggestions they can read it quickly and it like now boost their morale and they they are now more motivated to go and read further that is how i approach anyone who comes to me and ask for a book recommendation the first question that i will ask is is there something that interests you or do you want to improve on something that you are aware of it's almost like what is your purpose and then i'll tell you which direction to take it yeah, in, yeah. And, and it also comes from a book which is like start with why so why are you reading that book and if the why is clear you will tend to stick with that book and obviously it should interest you and that is why i am asking that if if the if the topic if the topic is interesting enough for you because let's suppose you are trying to improve on something like say your time manager time management is fucked up you you need to properly manage your time and now it is a recurring problem that you are facing and like this is how our brains operate it it needs to find the solution very quickly so if if that if that is a problem that you are currently facing you will tend to find the solution in a very quick manner and now you will try to figure out solutions while reading that book so it it that the probability of sticking to sticking to that book is very high very high so the probability of staying to that book because it is something that is making sense is much higher than otherwise making sense and also and also there is a chance that you will find the solution to your problem that you are currently facing in that book so the yeah. see our minds wants closure mm. if there is a problem you you tend to find a solution because if the problem is still there and you are not finding a solution your mind will start overthinking and you don't want to go into that overthinking zone so it is better to look out for that solution and if the solution is there in the book your tendency to stick through it will be very very high very interesting now when you start reading a book and you are progressing through it right um what are some of the habits that you use to remember or to share with people or you know like what are the things that you do to make this book almost come alive in in your life see i have a notion page i maintain complete like there is a page for book learnings on notion and i do my entries there like once i read a chapter i'll go into my laptop notion screen and then i'll mention what i've read and what i've learned and what i can think that i can apply in my life and mm. i revisit it continuously and there are some books that i absolutely love i will reread them a lot like mm. the subtle art the go giver there are few books that have impacted me in a huge manner i go back to them again and again so that is how i do it but many people don't do it and that is how they are not able to recall things and not uh, able to retain that information that they have learned from the from those books and how do you choose between that you know this book i want the physical copy of this book i want the kindle copy of this book i want to listen to the audio book of how do you decide which will you do i first first buy the book on kindle because as as my collection is huge i don't have a lot of space so it is better to first read that book on kindle and if you like it then only order a physical copy and there are a lot of books that i've read on kindle and i still haven't bought the physical copy but i will in future because i want to reread it and 
I will mostly read it in the physical version. So my first go through is that first buy it on Kindle, and then if you like it, then buy a physical copy. I don't like most most of the times I don't own the audio book version of that book because I want to read it on my pace as, as go through. So the physical version does do does it very well. So which is why so sometimes you listen to an audio book version, but you won't always have an audio book of something, or you would have an audio book yeah, of something yeah. that doesn't exist in physical. Sorry. So you would have an audio book version of something that does not exist in the physical form. No, so sometimes no, you don't. No, that no. there are books that I own in all three versions: in Kindle, in physical, in audio. Hmm. And and those are the books I have read multiple times. And the subtle art is one of them. Can't hurt me is one of them. Compound effect is one of them. So there are books that I what own. What is can't hurt me? Books. Which is can't, can't hurt can't, me. Can't, the can't hurt me by David Dawkins wala. David Goggins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. Interesting. So, did, did, did you like his approach of that going hard, that kind of a thing, can't kill me, that can't, that, that's something that appeals to you? See, he, he, is a, he is an extreme version, but it definitely strikes you that you need, you can push your comfort zone to a certain level, not to his level, but definitely if you push your comfort zone levels, uh, you get a killer attitude like you get a fighter attitude that you can achieve things in life. Hmm. What are some of the interesting books that you're reading right now? That you uh, see, I, I I recently finished a book known as The uh, Education of a Value in- Investor by Guy Spear. I finished it yesterday. Hmm. Right now, I am reading this book as I mentioned that I showcased the innovation stack. And the innovation I'm, stack. Uh, yeah, I am rereading a book called A Man Called Ove. It's a fictional book. Hmm. It it's a very very great book. Like it showcases, like it will make you come all those emotions that is present inside you. It will make those make those emotions come out of you. You will you will actually love all the characters present in that book. That's so interesting, right? So two questions come out from this. One is that you read multiple books at the same time. I'll read two three books at a time. So two three, two, three books three, at a time. Books. Yeah. Two, three books at any point of time are what you are currently occupied with. See, see, see there are books that I read every day, like the Daily Stoic, Tools mm-hmm. of Titans is something that I almost read every day because the, the chapters are very short. And mm-hmm. those are to be consumed for a longer period of time because you are getting lessons from people who are titans in that field or experts in their field. The Daily Stoic uh, the daily stoic is meant to be read every day because it is a daily reminder to be more calmer, to be more stoic person. Correct. So those are the books that I read every day, and mostly I'll I'll bounce off from one book to another. So there will be multiple multiple in the sense that there will be not more than two three books that I'm reading at a particular time. Okay, and um, you've you've settled on this three books as a good number. You've by mistake write five books at a time and then one book at a I time have, and... i have done i have done that i have read multiple like i have done five books at a time too but it it didn't work well for me because uh, you don't you are not able to allocate particular time frame to that book so two three suits my suits my nature my reading mm-hmm. journey also I think there's so many people who have different styles of. So my dad believes that he has a bookshelf, entire bookshelf, which is his currently reading books. There are twenty of them inside. Oh. They're currently reading books. So it's it's really funny how the that people put this. The second one. Okay, was, so so wait, wait, wait. wait. <clears throat> I, I want to add it add to it. There is my in, there is my author friend. Uh, he he lives in Canada, and he has a seven day seven books seven day seven book routine where he picks one day for one particular book and read 10 pages of that book so book one he'll read 10 pages for book two 10 pages tomorrow and it will like it will rotate on weekly so this is also something that people do and there are many people they have their own uh, like own nature and own habit of it so some people will stick through one book and they won't read simultaneously another book and it happens, it, it it depends on the nature of the person. I have to tell you a funny story at this point of time. So my grandfather, yeah, sure. he kept saying that, you know, I have never finished a book in my life. And we asked him why. He would say, every time I sit down to read a book, 
right? I will read up till this half of page, and then my wife will call me for something. So I have to go up, get up, come back, sit down, and then I'll sit down and I've forgotten what I read. So I have to start again from the top, and then I'll reread, and then somebody else will call me. So I have to go again and do it. So <laughs> that was his excuse for never ever reading a book completely. How do you avoid distractions? Mm, how do I? Okay, uh, you see, uh, I don't have to avoid distractions because uh, I'll keep my phone aside. I I won't look at it because now as it has become a habit, I can do it very easily. And see, reading is something that keeps me indulged indulged in it for a longer period of time. So. Uh, i live in a very quiet place there is no noise around at the time i am reading that book there is no noise around so it it actually doesn't have a lot of distractions that can distract me and keep me out of that book so uh, i mean that uh, if you need to the 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 worst enemy is your phone keep it aside and i think i think that people can figure it out then so keep so the worst distraction is phone then yeah. family so, members so, you tell them please this don't see all my see all my notifications are off hmm. i don't have only any notification of anything except for emails because emails are important Correct. no instagram no facebook no whatsapp no youtube all notifications are off hmm. and when i sit down to read my mom is busy doing his daily chores her, her daily chores so she won't distract me hmm. so so this is one thing that like i am blessed with and i am very lucky that there are no distractions that like uh, that are keeping me away from that book so okay. you know when people are um, surgeon like when people are starting to read what what do you think is the benefit of things like um, you know book clubs or reading clubs or reading organizations have you ever been part of any of these no i i am not and i am not sure how does it help because i haven't been a part of anything like that see the the best thing i have done is having an accountability partner let's so okay. let's suppose as jen wants to read a particular book and i want to read that particular book or any other book for that matter so i'll make a pact with as jen that see what you have to do is you have to ask me that that day i have read that book or not and whatever what have i learned from that book from let like, let's suppose we we come to a pact that i'll read 30 pages and ashdin also will read 30 pages of that book so your job is to get me accountable and ask me that have you read the 30 pages that you promised and what did you learn from those pages correct this thing i i i am sure that this thing works because it worked hmm. for me not in reading sense but in some other activity hmm so getting but the accountability I, partner is step one yeah step one is accountability partner and if you stay consistent if you stay honest with him because honest with him her because mm-hmm. at the end you can lie lie to others i can lie to you like as in i have read 30 pages i can lie to you but i cannot lie with myself that main to aaj kuch padha nahi but i am still saying that i have so that is the worst thing you can do because first you are first you are not doing the thing that you promised and you are living in delusion and keeping others in delusion also correct so i i know that the accountability thing works but to be honest the book club thing and whatever things you asked i haven't attended a single one yet so i'm not sure on how these things work and how is the entire book review community and things like that that you're a part of because obviously i'm sure there must be a community that talks about books and you where you find like minded people or identify new books what is that like interacting with everyone there see you see uh, you, that that is what happens uh, when you are with like minded people uh, mm-hmm. they cheer you up they acknowledge what you are doing and there are multiple times that people have commented people have dm me that see this is one thing this is because of you have i have started reading this book and trust me it gives a, a, an immense amount of pleasure to me knowing that people pick my recommendations because i know that from that book recommendation i have added a certain value in their life hmm. see ultimately it it's a game of how am i making their life convenient or better or adding value to their life that is helping them live a better life so if my recommendation is helping them i can't ask for anything more right so when you are with like minded people the bookstagram community is something which will appreciate you and and to be honest i 
for all the for all the post i have done i haven't got a single hate comment till now lovely so that so that is one thing that they appreciate and if they don't like something they won't comment it to you hmm. see see there is one thing that is constructive feedback and people give me constru- constructive feedback then but they don't this is shit and and there is there is no kind of feedback so that is what happens and the bookstagram community is absolutely it is very sweet it's very appreciative it is very helpful to you if you ask them something they would get uh, get to you and try to help as much as possible i think that's amazing yeah. how do you decide what is your next good book going to be like your book uh, you see it it comes from the current book am, am i uh, i am reading uh, if if there is something that interest me in that book like let's suppose i was i i mentioned that uh, yesterday i finished reading the education of a value investor hmm. and it mentioned few topics that interested me so now those topics are on my to be read list, uh, list books so i will find books that cater to those topic but as i uh, but as i already have a lot of books unread books that are on my shelf i'll try to figure out on how to finish those first and then buy new ones so initially i used to do that that if i am reading a book let's suppose i am reading a psychology book or something like there is a book called as the art of thinking clearly it is a psychology mm-hmm. book it it tells you about biases and and the that the particular book art of thinking clearly mentions a lot of different books that cater to particular bias or heuristic so i will i will write, round it off and i'll i'll try and find the best suited book that caters to that particular topic and then i'll go and buy that book or i'll try to find out which is the book that best suits the topic this is how usually 90% of my uh, 90% of my next read would be it's interesting right you finish this and you say ha i did this i learned this now what next now what yeah next? so it, it so it it happens like a mind map so first there is a that it branches out and it it branches out and it branches and and then the depth of the topic like you you get to the roots and fundamentals of those topics it's not that you would read all the books of one author first and then go to another author then go to another author it's not like that depend depend depends uh, that is why i kept the 10% room because it depends mm. on my mood sometimes too like because that normally uh, happens with fiction books primarily not so much non fiction books i'm guessing it happens with non fiction also there is one mm. author called ryan holiday who read who wrote the daily stoic and it has right. a, lo- a lot of books that like those are learnings from those stoic and how did it apply to the modern world so there mm. is a book called the stillness is the key the obstacle is the way ego is the enemy and these are great books so whenever but all by ryan holiday around, or by other people they are all by ryan holiday okay i can showcase so, it to you so then you would go from one to the next to the next to the next because they all make sense in in line uh, uh, see see this is the obstacle is the way correct uh, this is ego is the enemy hmm. and this is still and and these are all the books that i i either have got as a gift or someone hmm. uh, gifted it to me in a giveaway so this is one author that i own a lot of books of because i own i think four or five books of the same author interesting so you know, it happens it, it it happens in non fiction genre also but the uh, the occasion is very rare like it happens very very low the 2 3% only interesting i was just saying that i've not read a single ryan holiday book i've read the stoic books the 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 philosophy books have not read the ryan holiday versions of understanding these are great ones if you if you want to like if you want to be very still person very calm you should go mm-hmm. for stillness is the key and like if there is something who has a lot of anger issues who has very pride in his success or where to the level he has got or has a very huge ego you can suggest or you can recommend him ego is the enemy ego is the enemy is the best book like it will actually make you very very humble hmm. it will like it will break your ego patterns and like the things that gives you a lot of pride so a definite book on something or uh, so, so, uh, to do someone who is very proud of or who has a very large ego so yeah yeah absolutely you too shall die all of those words that yeah. are whispered into yeah. your ears yeah, yeah, makes yeah, a big yeah. difference yeah i was reading a book the other day that said that you do realize that when it comes to your ego the number of kings and emperors whose names we don't even know right now 
at one point of time existed. Like, like, why are you thinking of like your legacy? Your legacy, where is it going to go? Stop thinking about it in that context. I think it's a, it's a nice and humbling thought. Yeah. So, uh, do you uh, do you know about the story with where a monk tells about this two shall pass? No, tell me. Okay. Uh, so, a king, uh, a king calls on his shield maker, the ones who make his shield, and tells him that write something on this shield that it would make it won't make me happy. Uh, See, it won't me. It won't make me happy when I'm very happy, and it won't be. It won't make me sad when I'm very sad. So the so the shield maker can't think of something, and he like he is in a lot of dilemma, in a very in a lot of confusion. Can't think of something, and so there is there is a temple around the king's palace, and he goes to that temple and sees a monk there, and he tells his problem to him that the king has. Ask them to make something which reminds him of the, these all things. So the monk tells him to write to write on the shield that this too shall pass. So when he is happy, so he'll he'll acknowledge that this, this is not everlasting. This phase of happiness will pass also. And when you are very sad, this will also pass. So it won't be everlasting. So and that is a very great thought because when you are very happy, you are over the top on the seventh sky, and you are very like. Uh, uh, you you think uh, you think of them you think yourself as the emperor of the world and you start doing things bullshit things that satisfies your ego boost your ego and when you are depressed very sad you will cut off everything so at this at that moment these this quote or this story this story will help you a lot this is very powerful instead of having the yeah. super highs and super lows how do you maintain that yeah. stability yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout yeah so, yeah so it that's... makes you neutral it makes you neutral instead of having highs and lows, highs and lows. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Arjun, before we part ways, what are some of the final things that you would want to say to our listeners about, you know, reading, cultivating reading and, you know, a few words to just like help people go ahead in the reading journey? See, uh, I, I would be devil, devil's advocate when I say that. Okay, reading is not important. Actually, it is not important. Learning is. So, uh, my mentor used to say me that, tell me that, reading is actually not important learning is and learning can be from any source of medium you can learn through courses you can learn through watching podcasts see someone who watches this podcast will gain some sort of value from this right you can uh, learn from courses learn from books learn from speeches of ted speakers so learning can learn you can learn from people who have a lot of experience so learning can be done from any source of or any source or any kind of medium you have to decide the medium that suits your nature reading might be a medium but it is not everything so make sure that you are a per- perpetual le- uh, learner you don't stop learning because if you stop learning you will not grow in life very powerful that learning is- should not, yeah. reading should not be the goal learning should be the goal reading should be yeah. one of the tools that you use for learning yeah absolutely yeah absolutely amazing Arjun, how can people reach out to you? How can people continue this conversation with you? Yeah, so, so the best thing is they can mail me at askcillyreader at the rate gmail.com or they yeah. can DM me. But as I get a lot of DMs, it won't be possible for me to like to reply those uh, DMs. But I make sure that I reply to everyone who mails me because the barrier of mailing is high not everyone will mail me so it becomes easier to reply to mail so if anyone wants to reach out to me and wants to ask me some sort of question ask silly reader at the red gmail.com is the mail you should send that perfect and your instagram is silly dot reader that is your silly instagram reader, yeah. and yeah. you have a youtube channel as well which is yeah, yeah okay uh-huh. so i have a youtube channel where i talk about books and personality development and uh, things that will improve your life. So if you want to follow me, you can check it out and check it out first. If if you think that it gives you a value, it teaches you something, then only subscribe to me. Okay. Lovely. But what is it? It is the channel is called. Well, the channel is Arjun Sajdev by the by my name only. By Arjun your name, Sajdev. Arjun Sajdev. Yeah. Amazing, Arjun. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining and having this conversation with us. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.